Oscars. Biggest Street Properties. Uh, we use these videos to talk about what the short sale process is like. Uh, generally, we're talking about servicers, what it's like to work with specific banks. Um, today, though, we're going to change it up and we're going to talk about investors, what it's like to work with specific investors. And so today, we're going to talk about Freddie Mac. Um, in general, I would I don't there's a lot to talk about. I don't oh, know yeah. how we're going to do this quickly. So we'll just focus on uh, what we're seeing recently uh, with Freddie Mac. Um, I've been in dialogue with them a lot because their servicer, I don't like their servicer on a certain loan. I don't like them at all and so I've actually reached out to Freddie Mac uh, to make them aware of that. And if you search through our videos, you'll figure out what bank, <laughs> what bank I hate the least. <coughs> Play Star! <coughs> anyway, so uh, Freddie Mac, um, you know, the one thing that I, that I that comes to mind right away about Freddie Mac, if, um, and so let me explain why this their role in the process. If you are a seller and you're thinking about doing a short sale, you more than likely write your uh, mortgage check to Bank of America or Wells Fargo or... or Chase or you, somebody. Who you don't write it to is Freddie Mac. But there is a chance that Freddie Mac is the one that owns your loan. Uh, they are called the investor. And so if you're thinking about a short sale, and you're in correspondence with the bank about doing a loan modification or some sort of relief, um, while you have them on the phone, ask them who the investor is on your loan. And if they happen to say Freddie Mac, maybe you'll do a Google search and find this video and we'll tell you what to expect. <laughs> and the one thing that I'm a little discouraged by with Freddie Mac is the paperwork, um, specifically Definitely. the short sale affidavit. Right. Um... Recently, they've changed their policies and have required some additional paperwork that, you know, it's understandable that they want all parties to, to be clear of the expectations. Uh, however, this requires notary signatures for pretty much anybody that's touching the process, in term, including yeah. agents and escrow agents, and it's really cumbersome to try and get it signed around and back to them in a timely fashion. Yeah, I mean, we don't need, in a typical real estate transaction, I don't have a need for a notary. Um, with the exception of earnest money, which the escrow company has a notary there to, mm -hmm. to handle that, I don't need a notary. I just don't need to notarize things. And so the idea that <coughs> uh, Freddie Mac requires something to be notarized and in, in very much the preliminary phase of the process is very discouraging. It's just a hurdle and it, it slows things down. And, I don't like it, but it's not going to destroy the process. So that's the one thing I would say is that the paper there is paperwork, more paperwork involved with the Freddie Mac file than right. another investor like Fannie Mae. Um, outside of that, um, Freddie Mac isn't terrible to deal with. Um, they can take. I can tell you one thing that can take some time is when we submit a short sale to a bank to get approved, and they let's say they approve it, but then they have to send it to Freddie Mac for approval. Their time frames for approving that are longer than Fannie Mae. Right. In my experience, those time they can take a little bit longer to review and approve a file than other investors. And so I would say that once they get it, I'm sure they have policies and guidelines and what they would like it to be. But I, I've seen it take um, three weeks. And I certainly, on average, I'd say it takes two weeks for them to respond. So. I'm sure it depends on a case-by-case -case basis, but... And some of the larger banks are actually starting to bring some Freddie Mac um, people in-house, or at least the resources, so that they can turn those files around faster. Here's the number one thing I wish Freddie Mac would do. Make it easier for people to contact you. I mean, I, I had to pay for some email addresses, so I went to a website where you could, like, you know, buy people's email addresses. Because I had to do that because I needed to get a hold of someone at Freddie Mac because um, this particular bank <coughs> thing, sorry, uh, that wasn't helping me out at all, um, I, had to, I had to go over them and go to Freddie Mac, but I had no way of reaching out to anyone. And so I just, for lack of a better term, I just um, spam assaulted like five VPs at, at Freddie Mac. <laughs> and I, I did get a response and they, on this new, recent file. I got a response, they called me back within a day, and so, just so you guys know how this works, is I email those five email addresses, and then I copy Flagstar Bank, or, or XYZ Bank, and then I copy like a local uh, news station, 
and then the Attorney General of Washington State. And then I compose a very nice email that says, hey, uh, this is the problem that I'm facing. Um, I know that our Attorney General is interested in foreclosure matters in our state and how it affects um, consumers in our state. So I've CC'd him on this email just to make him aware. And so I've done that half a dozen times without, um, and it's, it's been effective. Banks, when they see that, they respond right away, and that's all I need. And that's, that's as far as it ever goes. What happened yesterday? Yesterday, I got an email from the Attorney General, which kind of made me um, my heart rate go up. <laughs> and so when I opened it, I finally figured out what it was, is they were responding to an email I sent about the situation, um, this email to Freddie Mac initially, and they were opening, a, they were essentially opening a complaint with the servicer that I don't like. And um, so I then, today what I did is I took that email from the Attorney General, and I forwarded that to Freddie Mac and to XYZ right. Bank and um, just said, hey, this issue is still not resolved. And it sure would be nice if I had someone at Freddie Mac to talk to, but I don't. Yeah. So I have no way of remedying this other than the methods I'm employing, which mm -hmm. might be a little guerrilla, but they're necessary because right. I don't have any way of reaching out right. to a specific contact at Freddie Mac. Yeah, and while they can be hard to contact and they do have paperwork, they do they are pretty consistent so that we know for example if a loan first loan is with Freddie Mac and there's a second or a HELOC something behind it we know exactly how much the Freddie Mac is going to approve to go towards the second loan so in some way it, it's a double-edged sword but if Freddie Mac anyone at Freddie Mac is watching this or Fannie Mae or anywhere else set up a help desk and I understand it takes resources and time and money but you know set up a way for it's all about mitigating loss, and if you if we can get in touch with someone uh, versus not being able to get in touch with someone, we'll mm -hmm. certainly avoid uh, larger losses overall. So, anyway, Freddie Mac investor problems solutions policies guidelines. That's it's all it's all there's a lot to talk about, but mm -hmm. that's what we want to talk about today. So thanks for listening and.